Hello and welcome to Let Them Talk Pod, a podcast all about the English language and more. And this is our very first podcast. And for those of you who know our YouTube channel, Let Them Talk TV, I've made many videos. But if you scroll back to the very first videos, you'll see that I made them with John from Monty English. And guess who is my special guest today? Yes, it's John from Monty English. Say hello, John. Hi there, Gideon. Hello, John. And today we're going to talk about our experiences, our strange and sometimes weird experiences of teaching English abroad. So I've taught in Spain. I've taught in France, in Paris for the last few years. I've also taught in Scotland a little bit and in London. And what about you, John? For the most part, I've taught in Italy at the very beginning and then London and then a, a very, very memorable experience in Paris with, with some chap who, who looks similar to you, yeah. actually. OK, yes. Yeah. Well, so if you are thinking of teaching abroad or you just have a general interest in what English teachers get up to, then stay tuned. So hello, John. Hi, uh, Gideon. How are you? Yeah, fine. So uh, what I wanted to ask you first of all is what motivated you first to become an English teacher and where did you go? And I also think it would be interesting for the listeners, especially those who are thinking of becoming English teachers. How did you get your first job? Tell us more. Yeah, sure. So first of all, I guess I was motivated to teaching English really because I wanted to go to Italy and I loved Italy. I'd never taught before and there was an opportunity to teach children in kids camps, which was mainly in the north of Italy. So I thought it would be fun. I wasn't really thinking too much about the idea of, oh, I'd really love to be an English teacher. But I thought I would really enjoy doing fun kids camps in the summer in lovely Italy with gelato and uh, pizza and everything. And, and I thought that was a great idea. And so I applied for a company called Ackley. And basically they did, I think it was a three day training course where you got an introductory um, TOEFL, would it be, or TOEFL? TOEFL certificate as a teacher mm -hmm. yeah and then they sent us off around beautiful parts of Italy my first experience was near Udine which is kind of northeast Italy very lovely area up there and yeah that, that's how I got into it good and was the first experience nerve-wracking it was <clears throat> but I suppose because we had those three days training it was a baptism of fire let's call it that so baptism of fire to explain to the listeners because that's a difficult one it is just getting you into things straight away put you in like, a difficult position like going into the way? deep end jumping going, into the deep end yeah swimming jump. you either you swim or you drown Exactly. And, and thankfully, I swam, maybe not very well at first, but at the beginning, it, it was tough. It was a challenge. But I, I like fooling around and, um, you know, I, I'm a bit of a big kid anyway, so I enjoyed it. So, no, it, it wasn't too bad, to be honest. OK. So, Gideon, what, what inspired you to become an English teacher? I seem to remember you you were in IT to begin with and and you told me about some some interesting thing that happened in, in one of your first jobs as well. well. Well, actually, IT came later. My first experience before I went into uh, uh, the IT field uh, it was a little bit after I left university. I won't say when it was. It's quite a long time ago. And I was doing some very boring jobs in London, just temping. And I was so bored and I, and I wanted to have some new experiences. I had a friend, a good friend uh, teaching in Turin. I went to visit him and he was teaching English and that kind of inspired me. I was thinking of going to Italy but finally I went to Spain, I went to Madrid uh, with no experience and no money at Excellent. all. Good I just uh, had not much knowledge of the English language either. Uh, just, <laughs> just got a one-way flight to Madrid. It seems crazy now. I just got a one-way flight to Madrid <laughs> And I and this was even before the Internet. And I photocopied some pages from the 
yellow pages, the Madrid <laughs> yellow pages, the other Pachinas Amarillas, and went around to some uh, language schools. And much to my surprise, the, the, the first one I went to offered me a job. And not because I was so brilliant or so skillful, but I still remember to this day, because it was the strangest interview I ever had, that the director of studies was asking me some questions, but, but, but he didn't ask me about the English language. The first question I said, so what star sign are you? <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, I said, um, I'm, I'm cancer. Oh, go, oh, you're cancer. Oh, great. Oh, cancers do so well here. At, oh, I almost <laughs> mentioned the language school. <laughs> They're so well here. Oh, so okay, great. Come back next week. So I got the first job because I'm uh, I'm a cancer. Uh, anyway. Wow, that's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, so. Just to ask you, I'm a Sagittarius. Would I have got a job? <laughs> no way. No, I don't think they right. like Sagittarius. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it could have taken me two or three interviews and I might have got a job in a decent school rather than the one you ended up in. You might. I think at the time they were desperately short of English teachers. And I know my, my uh, colleagues at this language school in Madrid, they knew as little or even less than, than I did. I, I remember one time... <laughs> I was sitting in the, in the sort of what's it called the communal area, and a teacher came out of her class of sweating. She ran out of her class, and she came up. She said, "Can I can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? What's an infinitive?" <laughs> and uh, that's an English teacher. That was an English teacher who was teaching. <laughs> she has a level of teaching. Oh, poor students now. Oh dear. Bless them. Now we can understand why why Spanish people don't always have the best level of English because of the likes of you then really well i think it's imp- <laughs> yeah i think it's improved I mean, i've been back i uh, went back to uh, spain recently i, I noticed uh, i was trying to speak spanish when i go there but when people speak to me in english i noticed that the uh, the level has has improved so <laughs> so you probably just sowed the seeds right it was you that inspired the spanish it, it, to get exactly better. exactly because- <laughs> <laughs> well that, no that's that's interesting i it's a nice story i, I like can, that can i ask you also i ask you a question sure. because uh, another thing that, that there's often forgotten when you're thinking back about uh, these exp- our first experiences but i remember in spain the pay was bad really bad i don't know how it's a function in, in spain you can you can kind of get by but did you have that how did you survive on a, well, i didn't even, maybe you, got, you were well paid at the time but i had a very low low salary and it was very difficult well, what about you well with my experience with kids camps you actually stayed with a family ah. and they used to give you bed and board so so they would give you your meals somewhere to sleep so you would actually get paid very well in a sense because you i think i think we got something like uh, 150 200 euros a week but because you didn't have any expenses during the week it actually right. worked out to be a lot of money you know so okay. it was basically i should have gone to italy i should have <laughs> done the kids camp <laughs> You should have done, yeah. No, it was great though, because you know you you basically had enough money to buy a a pizza and a gelato every night. Yeah, needless to say, at the end of the summer, I put on five kilos. So yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, it it was it was a great experience in that sense, and we never really felt that we didn't have enough money. Yeah, they had a a strange thing that if you took a holiday in the middle of the summer, then they wouldn't give you as much money at the end which was a bit annoying but if you kind of worked for the whole summer there was a period of maybe one or two weeks when there wasn't any work at all because all the Italians are at the beach but they kind of put you up in in one of their places we ended up staying could either stay in their small apartment in Milan or we stayed in the south in Naples in this rather random village the the director of the south as they as they called him basically put us up and we experienced some yeah, rather rather colourful locals, let's say that. There was definitely a vibe of, let's say, mafioso in a way. But it was fun. It was really fun. And, and the pizza, pizza was a lot cheaper in the South as well. So okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that really helped. It was very enjoyable. Very good time. Uh, okay. I know it's going to get the, the financial thing. You're, you're lucky. I think in, in, in Spain, uh, in order to make anything, you, you had to get private private lessons that's the way you, you've got connections and then you, you've got private lessons that might i don't know if that's the uh, the same now i'm taught in spain for a, for a long time well, but uh, might be the same in, in many places and so so you're in italy where, where else have you where else have you taught so uh, i i know you taught in paris because we worked together for a while but you can tell us yourself some of your experiences if you want 
Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I, I suppose other than Paris with your lovely self, I've, I've only really taught in, in England, actually, in, in London. So for the past probably about eight or nine years, I've, I've been teaching in London as uh, as Monty, the mighty Monty, yeah. and doing conversation clubs a lot of the time, which is a lot of fun. I, I've, I've done that probably, yeah, for the same period of time, seven or eight years. I like it better in London in some senses because you you get the mix of nationalities. Whereas obviously, if you're doing it in Paris, I imagine you, you generally just get French students. Is that right, well, Gideon? Well, yes and no. But Paris is a very uh, a international cosmopolitan city, so you do you get you get mostly French, but quite quite a few uh, uh, for. Uh, I say for foreigners as well. Foreigners is that the right term here? <laughs> non non French people. Non non French people. Let's say that. Yes. Yeah. And what do you find for so for French speakers, for example, do you find there's a common mistake? Oh yeah. That they, oh that yeah. They all make? the time. All, all the, the time. time. The same. What the you same. mean coming coming to your lessons? That's the common mistake. No. <laughs> Apart from yes, no, but I mean the the the, the French. I guess every nationality has uh, the same mistakes. I, I can't think. Uh, what, what is it? The, the French, uh, you know, like eventually have a, a different meaning and actually has different. Lots of false friends. I think, especially with French and English, there are so many false friends. Oh so, yeah, the, the the false friends thing. Was interesting, well. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 No, I I agree with you on the false friends thing. Yeah, a lot of French speakers I've spoken to have definitely had issues with those kind of things. They often use a word that sounds too good in English. It's kind yeah. of all the high level yeah. words in English often come from French, don't they? Yeah. I guess. Yes. Yeah, yes. Exactly. And and it, most of the time it works. That's an advantage too. Not only disadvantage. It's an advantage, but uh, it can lead to some mix up. And actually, I'm discovering new friends all the time. We we'll have to do a podcast just on new friends. I say new friends, false friends. Some, I'm discovering false friends, faux amis all the time. Like recently, gadget. I didn't realize that was a false friend because the French say gadget, but it's really? like a really in English gadget can be cool. That is a cool gadget, but in, in French it's like nya. It's just a gadget. It has like you know, no use, no functionality. It's just something very negative. So I discovered, always discovering new false friends all the time. So I'm uh, making yeah. mistakes. In- yeah, th- things like that are interesting though, aren't they? Because I don't know if you, you know, in, in English we have ooh la la is like a... <laughs> some, some, <laughs> something la plume de ma tante. <laughs> exactly but but that's something very kind of almost yeah. seductive and sexy in english language but actually if you speak yeah. to french people it's it's like ooh la la it's like oh no that's terrible so that, that that's yeah yeah that's yeah. that's an interesting a lot of stuff like that yes mm-hmm. but i don't know why uh, we always the english when they use like french expressions in english they're always different to the french what the how the french use it and vice versa it, almost always when the french use a like an english expression in their language it's just changed in some way so mm-hmm. i don't know if i'm trying to think of an example like you know, we say in English, we say it's, it's this is not it's not the Wild West thing, like it's you know, a crazy, lawless thing. But in French, they say it changes to Far West, not the, the Far, far West. west. Oh my God. Yeah, the Far. Why the Far West? <laughs> uh, well, well, I don't know. That's how things always get changed between the languages. That, that, yeah. That, that, yeah, that is a very interesting one. I mean, I'd, there were two things that I always used to find interesting in Italy. They, I, th- I think they do this in France as well, where they say they say I'm I'm going footing. A foot. <laughs> Yes. Which it, I guess in English that would be jogging, wouldn't it? Or running. Well, jogging, I suppose, really, isn't it? And, you know, quite often they say, are oh, they, yes, I'm, I'm going footing in are, your English uh, class. And go on. Are they going footing in their baskets? <laughs> <laughs> in their baskets? Well, I guess in, in, in French, the baskets are, are like a, a trainers. Or like oh, a, OK. No, no, no. Basketball <laughs> shoes or something. No, it is footing in my baskets. <laughs> in Italy, they don't go footing in their baskets. They they do go footing though, and you know it's quite incredible the number of people that don't quite believe that footing is not an English word. I, I find that amazing. It's and not then a word. it's not a word, is it? No. And then the other thing I find highly amusing, and perhaps this is a bit X-rated, but they on shops like sexy shops, they say a sexy shop. A sexy shop. Yes. Just. Okay. I didn't know a and shop that, could be sexy. I think a well, person could be sexy. I didn't know a shop could be. Exactly. That's missed why out. I, that's why I always find it amusing because it, you know, I always think as what, if a, if a. What is a sexy shop? Is that a sex shop? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. I I always see or, or picture in my mind a shop kind of posing in a sexy way, which which I find very bizarre. But but that's what they call them. 
That's... Uh, I do remember I was I was in China and I, by the way I wasn't going anywhere dodgy, but I I did see that the sex shops there they were called the shop of marital harmony. Shops of marital <laughs> harmony, which I, it's quite nice. <laughs> I'm just going to the shop of marital harmony if you've actually seen there. I, are you are you supposed to go there with your wife? I mean, that's I was, yeah, good question. I don't know. Maybe a Chinese listener can can respond to that. Yeah, we're straying a little bit from the point. Cause we are. I, yeah. I'd, but what I was going to ask you actually, because we did a YouTube video, which I think you might have mentioned in your introduction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, very first ones. Yeah. Yeah, the very first ones, which which yeah. we really loved doing. It, it was good fun. I'm I'm not really sure if the quality is very good and whether people would really learn too much, but they they were fun to do, mm-hmm. and yeah. I guess that pushed you on to, to continue with that, right? Yes. Yeah. So so you have your own YouTube channel, and you know, I mean, when you're on it, do you feel kind of like a bit of a star? Because I think you've got a lot of followers, <laughs> haven't you? there 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 are quite a few and uh, no i don't i don't feel like no but I, i'm i should say yes doing the videos with you is what started started off and i carried on and on and very bad and not professional but you you get better by doing and now it's it's great people are, are, are watching the videos and i hope they're learning something i mean that's why i'm doing it and you get a lot of good feedback usually usually good a few haters out there whenever you go to the world you crazy people but mostly good and it's really good to engage with people uh, from all over the world and uh, yeah I really, I really like that i hope we can do the same with the podcast as well and we can, we can reach people we can't on a, on a daily basis just to well, definitely. I mean, I, I feel a little bit intimidated because you are already a bit of a star, and I'm. <laughs> well, thank I'm, you, John. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to be... for the call from Hollywood. So, you know, any moment now, I'm standing by the phone. If, if we weren't in lockdown, that would have already come. I'm but sure. yeah, yeah. For, for me, I'm I'm kind of trying to follow in your footsteps. I, I guess in some ways, you you are the the star of screen and i'm i'm <laughs> i'm hoping some of your stardom rubs off on me you know on on, on this podcast and well uh, can, can i can i say can i say uh, i did the first ever uh, videos with you i've done like 100 and, i don't know 40 videos now and i've done the first my first ever podcast with you and yeah i feel very comfortable about doing that working working with you out, and i'm sure we we can do uh, many more together and uh, yeah it'd be great and you can you'll, you'll take yours to 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 a different level as well well great. well let, let's see yeah i mean i think i've i've always fancied myself as a bit more of a, a podcaster than than a okay. tv tv person or, or screen okay. person okay. so you know let, let, let's just hope that this isn't one or two rather not very good podcasts and then i fade into it into obscurity and then then you not go on to your stuff again you know because i i'm sure that's not going to happen though i think i'm destined for stardom on a podcast so <laughs> i think you are and do you mind if i ask you another question i know i know i'm i'm ho- i'm hogging things because you know go, go ahead so go ahead. this might be an obvious answer actually but if there's somebody that you think of in particular but have, have you ever had a difficult student oh god oh a difficult student yeah, I think you'd be lying if you said you never had difficult students <laughs> or you and you can and one thing I know from teaching is you can't no matter how good you are and anyone out there thinking of going to teach English let me tell you that I'm sure you're going to be great but you can't please everybody and there're always going to be people who don't like your style who don't like the cut of your jib if you know that expression just don't like you for no, no apparent reason and yeah i've had i've had people who just have just haven't got on with occasionally yeah you get difficult people some people are very very nice but they never stop talking that's that can be as a problem you've got to handle that you go to people who just don't get it but it's it's rare but of course you you, you've got to you learn through experience of dealing with that situation Uh, what about you it has happened yeah i mean not yeah, not very often, let's be honest. I mean, I think most people who come to London are, are, as I said before, are very motivated. So you don't really get difficult people in the sense that they're not interested in what you're doing. I think most people are very engaged. I have had issues in the past, I suppose, with people, yeah, either not 
you know kind of not being very pleasant but it it's very rare but I, th- I think a lot of those things are not necessarily about what you've done as an English teacher I, I think sometimes it, it's just people's you know personalities and, and the way you know perhaps things are happening in the world around them I think sometimes people just feel under pressure and and you know it comes out in in a slightly negative way and I don't think yeah. that they intend to do it you know and often you can win people around potentially or help them out with the experience they're having in London you do get people who get who get a bit stressed out about finding a job or you know kind of surviving because things can be quite expensive but I think most people take that in their stride as as in yeah if you take something in your stride it means that you you're like yes I can do this you know I I this is a challenge for me and I think most people who have already taken the step of moving to London are capable or think they're capable of overcoming the problem May, maybe not at the moment now well now there's some additional now. <laughs> stress levels it, indeed Try, trying trying well, to 25th of difference. may 2020 has been recorded so uh yes there's still a... yes we're, we're we're still just about in lockdown so yeah but yeah i'm i'm wondering one thing that i'm interested to know actually i i think london will be quite different af- after this is all over I think uh, world will be different. <laughs> well that, that, that that's very true but i <laughs> i imagine that you're going to get plenty of people in in paris that are still going to want to have lessons but i think i think in london it's it's going to be at least another six or 12 months before people come over again yeah, yeah. i'm hunkering down for um for online lessons i'm going to continue yeah yeah it's, it's a lessons. tough time if you're for, for, well, not just for, for uh, english teachers but if you're if you're a freelancer anywhere it's 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 quite a tough time yeah mm, um, definitely definitely so basically this is our plea so we're, we're begging you t- tell all your friends <laughs> about the podcast because yeah. otherwise we're not going to be able to afford to buy our oh, lock, lockdown are we, are we paid for this podcast i wasn't aware of that there is a, <laughs> are you not sponsoring it you're, you're sponsoring it, aren't you have I got a sponsor? I haven't got a sponsor. I'm waiting for Google th- to call. But, uh, <laughs> but I thought maybe you'd get somebody like Matt Damon, one of your Hollywood friends, to uh, uh, to sponsor. Okay. Call Matt. I'll see. <laughs> number. Any other questions you have for me? Uh, I did yes. want to ask you. I did want to make before we wrap up. I did did want to ask you, English teaching a good call? And went out there thinking, yeah. Should I become an English teacher? Or should I become a, a lion tamer or a, or a chartered accountant? What should I do? Weighing up the options. You say it's a, it's a good it's a good move. Yes, I would. Yes, I think the most interesting thing about being an English teacher is is really meeting people. If you're a people person, it, I think it's fantastic because okay. especially it's a not a people person. A what? Sorry, I'm not a people person. So no, <laughs> get it. <I'm> just... <laughs> You shouldn't be doing it then. You should become a a chartered accountant in that case. (laughs) But yeah, if you're a peaceful person and you love helping people, I suppose, as well, is is another thing. I really enjoy helping people. So in, in London, what I enjoy is trying to help people find a job or kind of progress in in their career. I find that really satisfying. I think that's great. And Mm -hmm. the fact that you have lots of different nationalities, you kind of get to know a lot how how nationalities do kind of approach the English language but also as well how maybe they approach things in a cultural way because you get some people that maybe lack confidence and that's not just from English it, it's maybe the environment that they've grown up in yeah so I, I like to encourage people I like to um, you know give them belief in themselves which yeah. which I think is always justified I mean I think most people that come to London I don't know what you find with uh, with French people speaking English in, in Paris but people are very motivated yeah, I was going to say, I, I totally agree with you on, on, on the point you said about uh, confidence, because I, I think, so it's the same in, in, in France and other, uh, other places, that uh, a lot of what we do is, is not about English teaching. It is about English teaching, but some people, they just lack the confidence and giving that, giving them a little little push and you know taking them in the right direction and then also, you know, helping them with their, their English level. 
uh, together yeah that makes a difference and you, you can you can feel feel them speaking with more uh, confidence and at a high level it gives you you know it's it's, it's really uh, uh, pleasing it, it is pleasing is that i just wanted to say that uh, just to remind people before before we finish that john john of uh, monty english yeah you can find out more from do you have a website you want to promote at this moment i do indeed yes montyenglish.co.uk that's my website what what about you do you want to plug yourself as well well you can you can see the lovely videos on let them talk tv on youtube we try to have a new video every week or two whenever i get around to it you you can can see it You can see the star Gideon himself in all his glory. And that, we're going to we're going to try and do these podcasts quite quite regularly. We're going to we're going to tackle things like English. Today it's our first one, so I thought we'd just talk about our uh, our English language experiences as, te- as teachers. But we're going to focus on grammar and other issues of the English language. I think John's doing his own podcast without me. I'll do a few without him, but we'll we'll work together in the future yeah. too. I'm sure. Well. I think the idea is is that we do a few few together and a few separately. That's that's okay. it, isn't it, really? Okay, maybe it's time to sign off. Yeah, let's sign off. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay, stay tuned for more.